Hello, I'm Marina Kim and here are the latest updates from Kazakhstan. Kazakh leadership claims credit for the prevention of a civil war between the north and south of Kyrgyzstan. President Nursultan Nazarbayev advised the interim government of the neighboring country to strengthen the chain of command and to stabilize the situation. Meanwhile, the further destination of Kurmanbek by Kiev and his family is currently being decided upon as Kazakh leadership has fulfilled its part of the agreement on Thursday when a military plane brought by Kiev to the town of Taras. As I said in the morning, we do not have any details. Is Bakif in Kazakhstan? He was here yesterday. So it is unclear if he is still in Kazakhstan? Yes, it is unclear. Will there be any OSC meeting related to the matter? Not yet, as he just arrived. So does this confirm that he is in Kazakhstan? As we said already, he did arrive to Taras. The original statement of Kurmanbek Bakiev's resignation was delivered to Kyrgyzstan. The special envoy of the EEC had passed the document to the interim government. Bakiev announced his resignation last night by fax from the territory of Kazakhstan. There is still no information on his exact whereabouts. It was reported earlier that Bakiev and Nazarbayev were allegedly planning to have talks. Thus, it was assumed that the former head of Kyrgyzstan will fly from Taras to Astana. On Friday, the president of Kazakhstan gave an eagerly awaited press conference, the first after the political unrest broke out in Kyrgyzstan. The Kazakh leader, though, failed to answer the most intriguing question concerning the whereabouts of his former colleague Kurmanbek Bakiev. A civil war in Kyrgyzstan was prevented by Nursultan Nazarbayev. On April 16, the head of state spoke at a special press conference in the Akorda presidential palace. A week after the unrest in the neighboring Kyrgyzstan, Kazakh president says that he began talks with his colleague Bakiev and opposing Eastern government, while still in Washington for a working visit. I believe we prevented a potential civil conflict between the south and the north of Kyrgyzstan. We have fulfilled our mission fully on behalf of the OSC and those heads of states who were concerned about the situation. President Nazarbayev confirms that he helped Bakiev leave the country on Thursday. Apparently he had to do so due to Kazakh chairmanship of the OSC. As a commander-in-chief, he ordered military pilots and special forces to evacuate Bakiev from Jalalabad. Our military pilots were in risk performing this operation. I want to thank them and ask the minister to award them appropriately because there really was a risk. Until the very moment of landing, they didn't know exactly where they would be doing so in Jalalabad or Osh. They had to make a decision while still in the air. Concluding his speech, the president of Kazakhstan expressed condolences to the families of those who died during the clashes in Bishkek and urged Kyrgyz citizens to maintain stability. The head of state also promised to provide humanitarian aid, but most importantly, Nazarbayev never revealed the current location of the exiled president. While the head of Kazakhstan tries the role of a peacemaker, his name is becoming more recognizable in Chechnya due to the efforts of local officials. On behalf of Nazarbayev, Kazakh authorities presented a bus, a computer class and a bust of the president to Eliseo Mengrozny, which was recently named in his honor. The initiative to name the first Lyceum in Grozny after the Kazakh leader belongs to local authorities, who have given the same name to a street in the capital of Chechnya a year ago. Representatives of the Education Ministry say with pride that a bust of President Nursultan Nazarbayev was installed in the foyer of the Lyceum. The ministry wants to sponsor the school and occasionally provide it with funding. The question of whether this triggers the forming of a personality cult of the head of state was answered with a resounding no by the Education Ministry officials. This was not our idea in the first place. It is simply the recognition of merits of our head of state. The school was named by the decree of Chechen President Ramazan Kadyrov. Nursultan Nazarbayev was the first to offer them a helping hand and thus he's respected and honored there. The practice of naming education institutions after the president has raised a wave of serious discussions in the country. Similar attempts have been made in regards to numerous schools, kindergartens and universities, but all failed. Apparently, though, the head of state simply waited for the better opportunity. He granted the use of his name exclusively to a new University of Astana, currently still under control, construction but already positioned as a world-class university. Builders of the new University of Astana, which is still a project name, will soon enter the middle stage of their work. A delegation from the UK is already here to evaluate the progress, as many foreign professors will have to teach here later. 
The first group of buildings will be launched during the day of the city on July 1st. The group's total floor area is 60,000 square meters and it includes the building of the administration, autonomous boiler and an atrium building. This is how the university will look like after the completion of all construction works in about 10 to 15 years. Back at the project's presentation, some questions were raised about the university's costs. The international university will meet the world-class standards. All studies will be conducted in English and the diploma will be recognized throughout the world. The cost of the project is high. Why do you ask? Later questions were asked about the tuition. The tuition will be £12,000 a year because we are inviting quality professors whose services are not cheap. £12,000 is $19,000 per year. The amount has immediately placed the yet unfinished university among the top free education institutions of the world. This did not stop more than 2,000 Kazakh citizens from submitting admissions test applications. This week, President Nursultan Nazarbayev said that the first 500 students will receive state grants for tuition fees. For the most part, the money will cover salaries of professors and curriculum developers. It is already known that the university will bear the name of the president. Perhaps an ambition is understandable. We live in the third millennium and know a lot about the great civilizations of the past. Who do we remember now? Not those who built stone monuments to themselves as their glory was ephemeral. Well, perhaps except for Egyptian pyramids. People remember those who invested in education and young talents. Therefore, I believe this project is very important for Kazakhstan. Usually an institution's specialization and the name it is affiliated with are inextricably linked, for example, based on the similarity of profession. This is different for Kazakhstan. The name of the president is more akin to a stamp of quality. In other words, only the best establishments get the honor. Interestingly, British Oxford, which is already being compared to the unfinished University of Astana, has no problems with having only its own name. Hundreds of cancer children infected with hepatitis B and C were left without treatment and medical examinations. Despite the allocation of millions of dollars, the health ministry appears to be saving on the sick children, said their parents at a special press conference in Astana. The health ministry does not fulfill its promises, say the mothers of children who were infected with hepatitis B and C. The government has allocated about $35 million for treatment and medical examinations. However, parents have to cover the cost of tests and medications by themselves. In the last four months, the sick children received cheaper and less effective drugs instead of the prescribed ones. Now, due to the health ministry spending money for other drugs, our children who begin treatment with pedialated interference were practically left without the treatment at all. The initiative group has written already the third appeal to the Prime Minister of Kazakhstan, Karim Masimov. Their demands remain the same, to establish an independent commission of the WHO experts to conduct an investigation and provide patients with quality medication. Parents request to consider the social status of children with cancer infected with hepatitis B and C. None of the promises that issues would be in the process of resolving starting March 1st were fulfilled, including the opening of hepatological offices, allocation of specialists and provision of medicine to our children. Healthcare officials ignore the press conference organized by the mothers of children with cancer. The high-ranking ministry representatives were seen at another event on that day, namely demonstrating their scientific achievements in the test tube babies in the luxurious Rixis Hotel. The secretary of the ministry, leading oncologist Kwanir Sadikov, refused to give any comments on the situation. I don't know where the people are looking for. I'm the head of another department. If their demands will not be fulfilled, the initiative group of parents threatens to appeal to President Nazarbayev and also to report violations to the police and the prosecutor's office. 